a controversial opinion that I have is, hmm, what's a good one to say on the podcast? <laughs> Uh, a controversial opinion that I have is it's a great idea to pee outside. Uh, it's one of the first date uh, things that I do to vet somebody. As we go out on a date, we're going for a walk, I gotta pee, gotta do it outside, okay? And if if it freaks them out, we're not going to be a good fit. It's too controversial. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Lacey J. I'm an entrepreneur who started a social media agency at age 22. Weird, I know. I've been niching it down and building it up over the last 11 years and a long 11 years they have been. Being on social media so much is hard on my and my team's mental health, so we work to find routines, balance, and focus on ethics that keep us showing up authentically online. If you manage social media accounts and you feel confused, unfocused, or straight up wackadoo, welcome to the club. We meet here once a week. So today we're going to talk about a few things that are not working on social media. Um, so let's get right to it. The first thing is getting verified or certified to run social or political ads on Facebook. Now, you may think that you aren't somebody who needs to get verified for this because you're not ever going to be managing a political uh, campaign or political ads on Facebook, but the truth is if you have any words in your posts like a uh, pandemic, like COVID, even things like, um, this is where I get the most frustrated is words like uh, Black Lives Matter, words like indigenous, um, any words that are associated with a specific type of social movement are flagged as a social issue. So if you are ever going to be posting content that includes words that could be associated with a social issue, um, which usually means anything having to do with people of color, uh, then you have to be verified to be able to run ads on content that includes those types of words, okay? The reason that this came about in the first place is back in 2016, uh, the, the presidential candidates at that time were just running amok with the kinds of Facebook ads that they were running. They would create an unbranded Facebook page and uh, let's say it would be Republicans or Democrats for whatever the, the uh, candidate's name was, okay? You could just create any sort of unbranded page and run ads off of it without any sort of verification. And it was done uh, in a way that really took advantage of the American people during that time. And so Facebook's response to that was to include this higher level of verification for anybody who wanted to run social or political ads. So what does that actually look like? You have to go into a spot on Facebook where you verify your ID, meaning you have to upload uh, the front and back of your driver's license. You have to receive a letter in the mail and put a PIN number from that letter into Facebook and check, verified. Now, it'd be nice if it was that simple, okay? Uh, about half the time it's that simple, about half the time for no reason known to us, Facebook denies um, the legitimacy of the ID that you uploaded, okay? So the next step that you have to do if they don't accept your ID as your verification is you have to go and get a, a notarized letter that's confirming that your ID is real, okay? Then you go back into Facebook, you have to upload that notarized letter and then you'd think, okay, I went through all that work, check, I'm gonna be verified. Wrong, <laughs> it's wrong, you're still not verified sometimes. Uh, on our team at Spry, 30% of us have gone through every step of that process and still have not been properly verified with no reason from Facebook as to why we are not properly verified and, and no recourse for what we can do next. So it's just stalled forever and you can't get verified properly. So if you are planning on running any sort of social and political ads, you need to run through that process of being verified and good luck. Hope you're seven out of the 10 that get it done properly and not three out of the 10 that for no reason known to us, the bots decide to uh, war against you, okay? Moving on. Another thing that is not working well on social media right now is not using any advertising on Facebook specifically. 
Um, when we were talking about Facebook ads before, that counts for both Facebook and Instagram because those ad accounts run through both platforms. However, on Instagram, there's still a higher level of organic reach that you can get with your content. Whereas on Facebook, the amount of organic reach that you can get is just, it's, it's laughable, okay? I grabbed a few data points to look at from one of our clients, uh, a local nonprofit page that we help manage. The average organic reach on Facebook for their posts is about 100, okay? Like 70 to 100 reach. And they have multi-thousand followers, okay? But the average organic reach is 50 to 100, okay? Now, if we put 15 to $20 of an ad behind that post, it increases a reach from 100 all the way up to about 1,500 to 2,000, okay? We're talking like a 1,400% increase in reach for 15 to $20. So if you are messing around with the Facebook page and you're trying to get some better reach and engagement, you will get nowhere if you stay organic, okay? You're gonna have to put some ad dollars behind it, and so, um, but the budgets don't have to be huge, okay? 15 to $20 is gonna increase your organic reach um, your overall reach from, you know, a few hundred up to a few thousand at least. So if that's important to you, which I'm sure it is, I hope that, uh, that you can implement a little ad strategy. I don't like giving money to Mark Zuckerberg. It's like not my favorite thing. I have it. I joke about it, but in reality, I do have a little bit of a value misalignment on it. It feels bad and not good to be giving money to Facebook, but at the same time, there are so many good causes that we work with and work towards building community for that those ad dollars, I've just got to focus on what it does to benefit the organization and the company that we work with and, and try to compartmentalize the fact that I'm funding something that maybe I have a value misalignment with. I don't know, maybe you have that feeling too. I'd love to talk about that in our Facebook group or any of our private communities. Okay, one of the last things that I wanna talk about today that is not working on social media is around reels on Instagram. So have you ever, you know, you, you create a reel and you upload it and all of a sudden you realize, crap, I forgot to add my captions or the music selection that I picked just was gone when I published it. So something I did accidentally made my music selection go away or shoot, I forgot to add somebody as a collaborator because that's something that you can't do after post. Um, any of those edits that maybe you forgot and you can't do after you post, sometimes you might have an inclination to delete that reel and go back in, re-upload it, make the changes and publish it again. And that's fine if you must, okay? Let's say you must have... I added the captions. You must have had a specific song. You must have had somebody as a collaborator. However, what I've seen in my experience every single time that I've had to delete and re-upload and make edits to a reel, um, the reach on that reel has been massively stunted. You can imagine if you are the algorithm and you see a post come up that has a certain kind of data in there, you know, it's it's x length it has the same words that you posted you delete it and re-upload it you don't look legitimate it looks like you're doing something fishy to the algorithm and the algorithm punishes you for it so you have to kind of think to yourself when you're making these choices about whether you're going to delete and re-upload how important is this thing that i missed um can i let it go this time because if i if i don't i'm probably going to have very stunted reach on this reel overall no, I'm not speaking from experience just this morning that I, <laughs> I had a reel that I uploaded and I had a song selection already done. And when I uploaded it, there was no music at all. So it was just a silent. And I chose this time to not delete and re-upload because I know that every time that I've done that, it's totally stunted my reach. So is it better that I have a good song associated with it or is it better that I reach a few thousand people? So tough to decide. Hey, if you're looking for ways to build your foundational social media strategy skills, we've got a course for that. 
I worked with Adrian Harvey, who's the lead digital strategist at Spry, has a master's in digital media, and has worked in digital marketing for over 10 years to create this course. The course is called Social Media on Purpose, and it takes all of the lessons we've learned over our combined 24 years in the industry and distills them down into bite-sized lessons for you to enjoy. If you're interested, check it out at thinkspry.com slash courses. Also, we're uh, kind of cute and, and funny if, if that's important to you. Okay, so before I send you off for your week, um, I want to tell you about this uh, life theory that I've come up with, okay? It's called the potato line. All right, so this came to be when I was living at my mom's house a few years ago, and there's a neighbor that we had next to us who's like 90. He he actually died about two years ago now, um, but about a 90-year-old neighbor who always kept this nice little garden right at the corner of our little dead-end neighborhood, okay? And one of the things that he often planted was potatoes. He planted lots of other things, and maybe I snuck over and stole raspberries and tomatoes and stuff, but he would say yes if I asked. He loves me. So um, every year he would give us some of the harvest from the garden that he had there. And one year when I was uh, very hmm, budget limited, <laughs> there was a year where I didn't have a lot of money. And he, when he did the harvest, gave me a big bucket of potatoes. Beautiful little golden potatoes, okay? And this bucket lasted me like two weeks and I made tons of stuff with it. I made fried potatoes. I made mashed potatoes. I made baked potatoes. So many things I could do with these potatoes. And and when I was so budget conscious and I had this huge amount of food that seemed like it was, it was just ever replenishing, I felt like I could survive no matter what. So that's when I came up with this concept of the potato line, okay? I want you to imagine a graph with me. On this axis is like your lifespan, okay? You're born here, you die over here. On this axis is like your resources, what you have in life, okay? And there's three lines on this graph. The top line is what you want and expect your life to be like. You can imagine that line goes zoop. It just goes up and to the right, straight line, no problems. You have everything you need and your resources are always growing, okay? Now, the second line in this graph is like reality. It's what you're actually experiencing in your life. And it has some peaks and valleys, right? It's often still moving up and to the right, but not in any way a straight line, okay? Now, the distance between those two lines on the axis, the what you want to have happening and what's actually happening, the distance between those two lines is where the majority of our suffering comes from. What we want versus what we have. Now, the potato line is much further down, okay? And the reason that I call it the potato line is there's this really small line right near the bottom of the uh, x-axis that is what you would actually need to survive. You could survive on potatoes for so long and you'd be okay, you'd be fine. So down here at the very bottom is this potato line, what you actually need to survive. So I find that if and when I can focus more on the distance between the potato line and what I'm actually experiencing, that's when I find joy and gratitude and presence. Uh, when I focus instead on the distance between what I actually have and what I want and expect to be having, that's when I'm feeling the most suffering. So what do I want you to do about that? One, I want you to eat a potato. You'll thank me. It's great. It's the best carb around. Uh, two, I want you to just be thinking about how little you actually need to survive versus what you actually have. And hopefully that'll be able to get a little more... Um, joy, gratitude, and satisfaction in your life. So have a wonderful day. Good luck with all of your social media this week, and we will talk to you soon. Bye. Social Media with Lacey J is brought to you by Spry Social Media Marketing. Edited and produced by Chad Hinman and executive produced by Lacey J. Vaught.